Today, I wanna make the case why you need a piccolo snare like this one. And actually, a funny story about this snare in particular. Uh, this snare started its life as a Gretsch Energy five and a half by 14 snare that came with a very uh, inexpensive drum set that I bought years and years ago. And long story short, my uh, dad used that shell for a different project and he had a little bit of the shell left. He had kind of cut the shell in half. And so he made this piccolo snare out of it and then covered it on the outside. This is actual DW uh, African Chechen. This is an exotic veneer. And then we've got some, uh, actually we've got a die cast hoop on the top and then a triple flange on the bottom. So anyways, this is a custom made 14 by, I don't know, it's like maybe two inches, uh, but it is a very shallow piccolo snare. And the reason I'm saying that you need one and the reason that I'm sort of presenting this one to you today, um, obviously I have a lot of snares and all of my snares do slightly different things, but there's also a lot of overlap in the sorts of sounds that you can get out of those different snares. But there are none of my snares that can do exactly what the piccolo snare does. There's something about having such a shallow shell, something where the shell really isn't involved much at all. You're basically just playing two drum heads and some snares um, with not much interaction from the shell at all. So you tend to get very, very few overtones and it's really, really just a neutral sound that almost sounds like a sample. So you can get sounds like this. which is such a cool, almost pre-processed sounding tone. And yes, I have mixed the audio that you're hearing, but really this drum does sound like that in person. So you can have it, uh, you know, just a little bit of dampening on it like I have and get a sound like that, or you could bring it all the way down. You could lower the tension and you'd get something like this. And then of course, nothing quite does a high and ringy tuning like a piccolo snare, which would sound something like this. So like I said before, I don't think that there's a lot of overlap between what a piccolo snare does and what any other snare you might have does. So I'm not recommending this because it's a super versatile do-all snare. It's kind of actually the opposite. It's like your versatile snare will be able to do everything except what a piccolo snare does. Um, another good reason to get one is that they're usually really cheap. They're not really that cool right now. So you can often get a piccolo snare used for, uh, for very little money and I know um, our David R did a video recently about the cheapest snare on Amazon. I think it was a piccolo snare. He recorded it and it sounded amazing. So I'll, I'll link to that video as well. But it's just relatively easy to get your hands on a piccolo snare. And like I said, they don't sound like anything else. And what I have found uh, lately, I've been playing this and kind of bring it back onto the kit um, the past couple weeks. And what it's doing is it's making me play differently. And I feel like there's definitely something invaluable about uh, a piece of gear that forces you to think differently and, and be a little bit more engaged in what you're actually playing. So I know I'm a bad influence. I just make videos telling you guys to buy things, but uh, think of this more like a love letter to the oft forgotten and oft overlooked piccolo snare, which I will admit I uh, have overlooked for years, but have really, really started digging, especially in the past few weeks. So um, get a piccolo snare. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.